Uh, since Hugo is in the chat, I'm going to go ahead and go to Twitter. Hey, Hugo, I'm going to pull up your chart. I really like it because it's simple. But I can't find you. Huh. Damn it. I don't know why. Too many Hugos. Uh, I can go here. I get a lot of notifications, but by the way, I need to, I need a link to this. Um, man, this COVID stuff is really so, so here is a list on the CDC website of all the people that are dying right after taking the vaccine. So uh, go check that out for yourself. Uh, I don't have the direct link. I haven't had time to look into it, but uh, so this is, you know, doctors uh, are required, I guess, to fill out. Uh, a form if a patient dies soon after taking the COVID vaccine. And, uh, and, and this is like the, the explanation, like, hey, this person died within 24 hours, this person died within 48 hours um, after taking the COVID vaccine. So, so check, check these out. I mean, this is, uh, and unlike, you know, a guy getting hit by a motorcycle or a guy falling off a motorcycle and dying who happened to test positive for COVID a month earlier counts as a COVID death. Uh, no media is going to talk about this publicly whatsoever uh, if a person dies within 24 hours of taking the COVID vaccine. Uh, but this is what you have on the CDC website and you can read all about this if you like. And this is why I have zero interest in uh, even recommending that my parents take the vaccine. Uh, I still would like a like a link to this. I, I'm sure I can find it, but this is on the CDC website. This is not like some conspiracy theory website. Okay, so uh, let me scroll down. I got a lot of notifications. Oh, here he is. Oh, it's underscore Hugo. No wonder. Hey, thanks for the shout out. I'm looking for his chart, the chart that we talked about with Socrates. It's there somewhere. There it is. There it is. Point that. So yeah, man. So so far, so good. Uh, this was the chart that uh, we discussed on my show, and I like it because of its simplicity. Uh, I like this because of its simplicity. And uh, is just, you know, an exponential curve that measures the time between the low uh, and the halving date and then making the potential top the identical time away from the halving. But there is a consequence to this. Uh, this means that uh, the top is going to be made uh, fairly soon. And then we could have another extended bear market, but the last bear market did not came short of the prior swing high. So if this thing goes up high enough and the target here looks about two, to be about 200,000, maybe more, uh, maybe close to 220. And, uh, uh, and from there, we should avoid the 20,000. I mean, we can pull back for 70% and we'll still avoid uh, the 20,000, but it will be interesting. And that target is soon. That target is September. Uh, so I kind of like this chart. Uh, I, I liked it because he's uh, putting a price and a time. And that creates a much greater probability of being wrong. Uh, that's what I do as well. And, you know, I deal with it. Uh, so, but you're a if you're able to try to identify a time and a price, uh, you can reevaluate things if your time target was hit. What's the possibility of going to 60, 70,000 and that being the top before another long bear market? I say that probability is small. Uh, I don't expect a long bear market from a 60 to a $70,000 top. Uh, I believe that if we hit a 60 or a $70,000 top, um, it would not be a long bear market. Uh, and I think that's now a little too low. Um, even that's probably too low. Um, I think that the bear market would be no more than six months. 
that's the maximum six months, uh, probably just a few months. Uh, so if we do get into the mid 60s to 70s, like as long as we stay under 100,000 uh, with this current run up, I do not foresee a long bear market. I see a short bear market. Um, I see a bear market that would be even shorter than uh, this bear market. So if we call, uh, if those that consider this to be the end, oh, see, okay, let's back up here. This is the monthly chart. To me, to me, the bear market, you know, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use uh, this. This is monthly chart. So I'm going to hold the shift key. So to me, the bear market lasted 27 months. Well, 26 months, right? So let's, uh, if I move this over by one. So to me, the bear market lasted 26 months. So here is the, the candle that started the bear market, January. Uh, bear market starts in January. And to me, the bear market ends in March. That is 26 months. That is more than two years. That is two years plus two months. To me, that's how long the bear market lasted. Now, to other people, the bear market only lasted 11 months, okay? Those that consider the bear market ending, uh, and it's debatable on both sides. I'm not going to say that I'm right, uh, but that's my view. Also because, you know, that's when I became a bull uh, right there, right at that crash. Uh, to me, that's when the bear market ended. I was always concerned until that happened. Now, if you are the type of person that feels that the last bear market only lasted 11 months and the bull market started here, the bull market started here, not sure why that's blue and not green, um, then this was also a bubble top to you. That means that this was another bear market. And this bear market lasted uh, either not uh, eight months. I'm going to start on this candle. And this bear market lasted for eight months. So if we top uh, under 100,000, I foresee a bear market, a, a, a bear pullback similar to this eight month pullback, but I think it would be shorter. And I think it would be smaller in magnitude. So I don't expect a 70% correction, maybe a 50%. And I don't expect it to last eight months. I expect it to last no more than six. Okay. So something like this, if we, well, we can use the top of the candle. Uh, I'm going to hold the shift key. Okay. What's going on? to there that would be the type of bear market i would expect as you can see that is a 50 percent correction and it lasted for no more than six months and then from here all you have to do is just like ignore these two candles and then i would expect us to go up and do this again and as you can see that is about a 500 percent rise which is a uh 4x rise uh so if we do fall 50 percent from say 70,000, that takes us well, let's say 80 let's say we go to 80,000, right Let, let's be really optimistic let's say we go to 80,000 and we fall 50 percent down to 40 uh that means a 4x from 40 takes us to 160,000. uh so that's uh, and uh, 160, 170, and that can put us in line with what Hugo did, because if we top at say 80 going into the summer, and then we have a three to four month correction. Uh, so let's say we top in early June and then July, August, uh, he's got September here. I don't know. Maybe may, may miss that target by a little bit. This may get stretched out a bit. But we'll see. We'll see. That's kind of my view. All right. Now I got questions. <laughs>